Hey everybody, I've got a tutorial here on city placement in Civ 3. So, uh, first thing first, make sure that each land tile is accessible by at least one city. So, what I mean by accessible, if you look here, this is a three tile island. Uh, this is the flat, the fat plus shape that happens when your city's borders expand, and your city can only use tiles that are within this fat plus. Like, it can't use this tile, it can't use this tile, and it can't use this one. So, you'll notice that. Um, Based on where the city, city Rome, here is positioned, we can never access this tile uh, unless we plant a city on it, but I don't think that would be a very good spot. Uh, so yeah, by planting on this bottom tile, we wasted this tile. So we want to plant our cities, like right here would be a good one, because then you'd be able to use this tile, this tile, and then the same amount of water. So it evens out. Uh, next, uh, ideally should have as many C tiles as possible. This is like uh, an ideal thing, but they're less essential than Latin tiles. For example, uh, let's find something like this. Yeah, if you, for example, if you plant a city here, then you'd be able to access all these city tiles or these sea tiles. Whereas if you planted it here, you would not be able to uh, access this one and this one, for example. But that doesn't mean you should plant like cities like this, for example. I mean, you could if you wanted to. If you wanted to build a lot of cities, that's your strategy. Uh, then that's okay. But it's okay to waste a few C tiles. Just like, if possible, try to get all of them, or as many as possible. Because C tiles only give commerce and a little food, not really food, uh, at least until offshore platforms. So they don't really produ provide production, so they're not quite as essential as other tiles. Uh, it is perfectly acceptable for a single tile to be accessible by more than one city. This is the kind of thing I can't believe I have to say, but apparently I do. So, for example, you'll notice if we plant a city here, uh, there's some overlap. So, both Rome and Kume can use this one C tile. And apparently, some people are under the impression that that's a bad thing and you should avoid it. No, it's, it's actually perfectly acceptable. I was actually watching a Let's Play where uh, a guy was playing, and he was in a position where... If he wanted to gain access to a cow, he had to plant his cities so that there was some overlap in the tiles. And so he chose to just ignore the cow and make it completely useless, uh, like not plant it within the radius of any city, because he thought that was the better option than having some overlap. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with overlap. Uh, the only problem is, like, if you have too many cities, there's corruption. But the overlap itself is not inherently a problem. So, uh, all other factors equal, coastal city spots are better than non-coastal city spots. The reason that for that is pretty simple. If you're a coastal city, then you can build a harbor. If you're not a coastal city, you can't build a harbor and you can't build ships e either. So, for example, uh, you wouldn't want to plant a city here, because even though you can use these coastal tiles, you'll never get a harbor, so you'll never get the, the plus one food from having a harbor. Plus one on every coastal tile. Uh, next thing... Plant cities next to rivers and lakes, so you don't have to build an aqueduct. If you have access to fresh water, aka if your city is next to a river or lake, then you can grow to size 7 uh, or higher without an aqueduct. So that's ideal, obviously. Uh, there's no downside to planting next to a lake, it's only an upside. Uh, the one downside to planting next to a river would be rivers are like plus 1 commerce, so you'd be giving away plus 1 commerce by planting on that tile. Uh, but on the other hand, aqueducts cost 1 gold per turn in maintenance, so it almost evens out, and yeah. It also saves you the 100 shields or whatever it costs to build an aqueduct, so it's definitely a good idea to plant on fresh water whenever possible. So for example, like this city, for example, it's next to the lake, so it wouldn't need an aqueduct. Or we'll see if there's any rivers. This is an 80% water archipelago, so it's possible there are no rivers on the entire map. Wow, hope nobody wanted to build a Hoover Dam, because <laughs> don't think that's possible. Okay, moving on. Uh, cities on hills give a 50% defense bonus. This isn't really something you should build your strategy around in single player. It's extremely useful in multiplayer, but uh, we're not in multiplayer. The only acceptable, the only exception would be uh, this is kind of ridiculous, but let's say you spawn around here and your enemy spawns here. So you might want to plant a city on this hill tile, for example, because this is like a key juncture from where he might attack you. So if you think that city is going to be attacked a lot, maybe it's worth moving on to the hill. Uh, but generally, hills are good tiles, and so you don't, if at all possible, you want to not plant on them. I'll get to that a little later. 
Uh, next factor. Yeah, uh, ensure your cities have a balance of food tiles and production tiles. Normally, this is not a big deal. Like, if you've got, like, plains and grassland, you can just use mining and irrigation to take care of that. Uh, but an example would be don't plant a city that's, like, like, right here, for example. You wouldn't be able to get much food in that the city. And on the other hand, if you had a city that was, like, all floodplains, I mean, sure, you're going to grow really big, but you can't really get anything from that growth because you can't really... Uh, like, there's no mountain tiles or hill tiles to use to turn that growth, to turn that food into shields. Uh, and this is a small thing, but build canal cities when you can. This is like a, a fun hobby of mine. Uh, I'll try to find an example. Yeah, for example, here you can sail ships right through there. Uh, another reason for this. Uh, you can actually do that with irrigation too. So for example, you can't irrigate to the other side. Like these tiles cannot be irrigated until electricity because you need like a continuous chain of irrigation from a source of fresh water. Uh, but if you planted a city here, then you could irrigate this tile. This tile where the city is automatically counts as being irrigated. So you can irrigate through the, the hill by uh, planting the city there and then you can irrigate and then up in there. So yeah, that's something to consider. Basics part two, you don't get to use the tile that you planted on. Uh, plant cities on bad tiles do not plant cities on good tiles. So for example, this is a wheat. Wheat is a good resource. Don't put a city here, because then you don't get the wheat. Uh, you get a real big advantage from having a city next to a wheat. You get no advantage by having a city on top of a wheat. Uh, the wheat just disappears. The one exception to this is, I believe... Uh, like iron on hills. I think you get plus one production in the city square from being on an iron on hills and maybe aluminum and, and coal too. Uh, but in all other cases, like don't plant on cows, don't plant on wheat, don't plant on any bonus gra or resource if you can help it. Uh, if it's a case of like there's a whale here, then you either have to choose between the whale or the deer, like because you can't get both. So in that case, maybe you want to plant on the deer. Uh, but yeah, if at all possible, don't plant on bonus resources. Resources that only give uh, commerce, that's more negotiable. Like, you could plant on, like, well, tobacco is only plus one commerce, so you can totally plant on tobacco. Uh, but, for example, silks or incense, yeah, if you think that's the best choice, then go ahead and plant on those tiles, because they only give commerce. Uh, but any resource that gives bonus food or bonus production, and it's not a, a an iron on a hill, do not plant on that tile. So, uh, what are the best tiles to plant on? Well, the best tiles to plant on are the worst tiles. So here's the list of the worst tiles, and I'll get into an explanation of why the order is like this uh, later. But for now, all you need to know is that tundra is the best tile to plant on, if all the, all the other things being equal, and bonus grassland is the worst. And of course, like cows is way worse than bonus grassland. But of all, t this is of all tiles uh, without like uh, any bonus resource, so without any sugar or uh, spices. Because we've already established, don't plant on uh, bonus resources or luxury resources if you can help it. Great. Uh, so the next part, how far apart should I plant my cities? Um, a lot of people like model after the AI. Uh, I'd recommend slightly closer than that, but it's kind of fine. Uh, the general recommended strategy I'd do is three to four tiles apart in single player. Uh, but basically what you need to know is there's like benefits and drawbacks to both strategies, far apart and close together. Uh, essentially, planting cities together is closer together is stronger in the early game, uh, but weaker in the later game. So, uh, in multiplayer games, it's another issue. Uh, there's no late game because the game only lasts like 60 turns or something. And it's easier to defend cities that are closer together and people play very aggressive in multiplayer. So in multiplayer, two tiles apart is the best city placement. Uh, but in single player, three to four tiles, that's great. So when I say three to four tiles, I mean like, so one, one, two, three. That's three tiles apart. That doesn't mean like there's three tiles between them. This is four tiles apart. That's not three tiles apart. So when I say two tiles apart, I literally mean this, which is something that the AI will never, almost never do. Uh, but yeah, it's something you're allowed to do. And it's actually very beneficial to do in some situations. Uh, don't be scared of planting two tiles apart. Like if you're in a situation where, let's say there is a, a whale here and a whale here, the only way to get both of those whales would be plant a city here and plant a city here. And I'd ac actually recommend doing that. There's nothing wrong with planting two tiles apart. 
just maybe like make your other cities a little bit further apart to compensate, you know. Um, yeah. So that's the basics of city planting. Uh, let's just do a, I'll show you guys what I would do. I'll just randomly generate a map and pick like two islands and show you how I would plant my cities on them. So let's get all of these coastal tiles and we're planting on a grassland, not on the bonus grassland. Um, we'd lose the commerce if we planted on the horse. So I guess this would probably be the next best spot. Uh, this is kind of close. Mm, it's still three tiles apart. Yeah, we can get away with that. Uh, so where to next? Ooh, so here's a case where we have to choose between the fish and the bonus grassland. And I think the fish is probably the, the better choice here. One here. Ooh, this is a good one because it's on the lake. So in this case, I'd recommend planting uh, two tiles apart because you get both the fish and you get Pompeii to be on the lake. So we're going to want one here, one here. Okay, so now we got some stuff in the middle. Remember, we don't want to waste any tiles. Hmm. So when the borders expand, all of these tiles will be used except for the horses. Hmm. Eh, I guess that's okay, maybe. I guess you can maybe put Pompeii on the horses. Uh, and then you might want one here. This is like a, a little bit of a, a close planting, but I think it's pretty good. So we'll try uh, another example with maybe some further part planting. So put here so we get the whales. Uh, the only other two tiles that get the whales are here and here. And these are both bonus grasslands. Bonus grasslands are plus one shields. So we don't want to plant there if we can help it. So uh, here. Ooh, we'll do this because I want to be planting on the tundra tiles if at all possible. There. Uh, realistically, we wouldn't know that there's rubber here. So we'd put it here, and then here, and then, uh, God. So you have to choose between the whales and the bonus grasslands. And so I think in this case, the whale has like plus one commerce, so I think the whale is the better choice maybe. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, you can stop here if you're a new player. If you want to get into like the bonus, more technical stuff, here's the next part of the tutorial. So the bonus lesson is the strengths of cities being farther apart. Uh, so fewer buildings need needed to have the same effects in the later game. So let's say you have an island that's 100 tiles big. You can either choose between 20 cities on it or 10 cities on it. You're going to use the same amount of tiles either way, but if you build 20 cities, you have to build 20 libraries to get the, the bonus, com bonus science associated with the commerce from those tiles. Whereas if you build 10 cities, you only have to build 10 libraries. So you save all those shields and all that maintenance. Uh, it minimizes rank corruption, and rank corruption is corruption from the number of cities in the late game. Uh, it's easier to build big ticket items like wonders and spaceship parts because each individual city, because you have fewer cities, each individual city has more production. Uh, it allows you to claim land more quickly and it requires fewer settlers to expand across a fixed amount of land. So like I mentioned, most of the strengths of having cities far apart are focused in the late game. Uh, but weirdly enough, this one is actually a pretty big deal in the early game, especially on higher difficulty levels. So if you want to plant your cities tightly together and you're playing on high difficulty levels and you want to claim a lot of land, what you do is you plant them far apart at first and then you fill in the gaps later. So you secure all that land and then you can worry about having the optimal city placement. So the strengths of cities being close together. Uh, it minimizes distance corruption in the early game. So for example... If your first three cities are these ones, you're going to have less distance corruptions than if your first three cities were these ones. But by the time you fill out the rest of the continent, uh, you're going to have <laughs> roughly the same amount of distance corruption. Uh, cities are founded faster because you physically only need to walk the city, the settler two tiles to get to this tile as opposed to to get to that tile. Uh, so you get two more tiles of, or sorry, two more turns of food, of production, and of commerce, uh, while your settler would otherwise be walking if you chose the further uh, 
city location. So that can actually have a big effect early game and kind of help you snowball and like get big and fast. Uh, you have more cities to hurry production from. So for example, let's say you're trying to do an attack on this island, right? Uh, if you have a city here, 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 you can rush a lot of bombers. Like if you just need to pay a lot of money and get a lot of bombers really quickly. Uh, as opposed to if you only had two cities on this island. Uh, you'd have more choice of where to hurry production from. Also, one strategy I like is uh, using the forced labor hurry production, uh, slaving I call it, uh, to hurry a lot of like early game military units. And the advantage to that is it doesn't matter how corrupt your cities are, even the m least corrupt cities still slave at the rate of the most corrupt cities. So you can like slave out like uh, galleys or whatever from these, these cities, and since you have more cities, uh, you have more options and you can slave out more. And this combines well with the fact that you get more benefit from global effects, and that could include like Sun Tzu's Art of War or something like that, but also luxury resources. So luxury resources provide more happiness if you have more cities. Uh, you have more free, unit, more free unit maintenance if you have a lot of cities. Uh, it depends on your government, obviously, but uh, basically you get a free amount of free unit support depending on how many cities you have. So having more cities gives you more unit support. So in despotism, every city you have gives you four potentially four gold per turn in free unit support if you're over that cap. Uh, in Republic, it's actually quite similar because even if you plant your cities very close together, like this city, uh, if you had a harbor here, you could get it to size 7. Uh, so you can get more unit support by having more cities in Republic. The only exception would be democracy, because uh, you don't get any unit support in democracy. But yeah, generally you get a lot of free units from free units as in the sense that you don't have to pay upkeep on them uh, if you have your cities close together. Uh, you have more uncorrupted city center tiles because, first of all, you just straight up get, if you, the city is size one, it gets two food in the city center and then two food or whatever from the grasslands or whatever tile it's using. So you get free two food from just having your, uh, your city. And the first commerce and the first uh, shield you get are always uh, uncorrupted. So you have a minimum of one shield per turn and a minimum of one commerce per turn, even in the most corrupt city in your empire. Uh, so that means like a worker every 10 turns, and that's not insignificant. So it's a nice perk. And foster population growth. So you gain access to the available tiles faster. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I think uh, like a placement like this is more ideal. Uh, because you could like plant the cities a little further apart uh, and have fewer cities, but you wouldn't really profit from that until after uh, sanitation. Like these cities should all be able to grow to like roughly size twelve. Uh, if they had more tiles, they could grow beyond size twelve. But you need like a, a hospital to do that anyway, and that's not really available until late in the tech tree. So just having like size 12 cities, that's perfectly acceptable. And you got enough tiles for each of these cities to grow to size 12. Great. Um, yeah, uh, bonus lesson. So I showed you the order earlier of Tundra being the best place to plant your cities and bonus grassland being the worst of tiles without like a bonus or luxury resource or whatever. So uh, I'd give some justification for that. So the first thing is it costs two food to feed each citizen per turn. Tundra will never produce two food. Uh, even after you have railroads, it can't produce two food, so uh, you won't be able to grow with just tundra. So that's why tundra is the best place to plant your cities. Uh, desert can't produce two fo food per turn until railroads. Like if you irrigate the tile and then have a railroad on that tile, desert will produce two food, three if you're agricultural. Uh, so yeah, for that reason, desert is slightly better than tundra, but still, you're not going to get that until the industrial era, so if at all possible, you want to plant on a desert tile, uh, unless you're agricultural, in which case it's pretty similar to plains. Uh, after that, it would be non-bonus grassland and plains. Uh, these are better than planting on a forest, because if you plant on a forest on a grassland, sorry, uh, under that forest on the grassland, there might be a bonus grassland, and like we mentioned, you don't want to plant on bonus grasslands, because that gives you plus one shield. So between, given the choice between uh, a grassland and a forest on grassland, you want to plant on the grassland. Uh, after that, we have floodplains. Because, for example, non-bonus grassland, when irrigated, it produces three food. 
floodplains when irrigated uh, produces four food, both of those minus the food from the despotism penalty if you're in despotism or anarchy, but that's a, a caveat. So you get four food from flood and plains versus three from bonus grassland, non-bonus grassland if you chose to irrigate it. Uh, generally, it's better to mine non-bonus grassland. Uh, so yeah, floodplain is better than non-bonus grassland. So it's better to plant on the grassland than it is to plant on the floodplains. Uh, hills versus floodplains. This is an interesting question uh, because floodplains, like I said, produces four food. Hills produce one food and three shields. And generally, food and shields are interchangeable once you exit despotism, because if you want more shields, you can just irrigate, or sorry, you can just mine. And if you want more food, you can just irrigate some of the tiles that already had mines on them. Uh, but it's actually to better to plant on the floodplains. And the reason for that is floodplains will never produce any shields. Uh, and there's actually a bonus when you're in a golden age or when you're in wartime uh, mode. Both of those uh, situations will give you a bonus where it's plus one shield for every tile that already produces at least one shield. Floodplains will never produce a shield, so you don't get that bonus. So given the choice between planting on floodplains and planting on a hill, it's better to plant on floodplains. And of course, bonus grassland, it's great tile. You don't want to plant on bonus grasslands. I mean, it's pretty much like the same thing as like a sugar or something like that, so... Uh, yeah, I like to think of it as almost being uh, a bonus resource. So yeah, that's everything in the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Thanks.